Hey everyone, welcome back to our full stack real estate project with Next.js 14. In the previous episode, we implemented the edit property page. So in this section, we are going to enforce the authentication authorization for the edit property page. And in case you want to watch the previous episodes of this tutorial, I put the links of all previous episodes in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, as you can see here, I'm signed in in the user properties page. So now let's log out from the application. I can see now we're not signed in. But here if we try to paste the route for editing the property with the ID 1, if I hit the enter, we can go ahead and enter the edit property page and the all values of the property with the ID 1 is now here and we can edit the property. So in the first place, we need to protect this page from unauthenticated user. And in the next step in this video, we are going to enforce the authorization for this page. So each user can only edit its own property not the properties that belong to other users. So I go back to the VS code and in order to protect the edit property page from the unauthenticated user, let's go to the middleware of the Next.js. Here is the middleware. So in the first episode of this tutorial, we have configured the authentication in this project and created this middleware. So here, as you can see in the config object here, we only protect the user slash profile. So actually we need to protect all the pages that are under the user path. So instead of just explicitly add them here in the match list here, we're going to just use a kind of regular expression here after the user, I'm going to put a colon and then add a path and then a star. So now let's get back to the browser. As you can see, we were not signed in. If I try to refresh the page, you can see it sent us to the login page. Now the edit property page is protected from unauthenticated users. So now let's log in real quick. Now I go to the properties page and now we can edit the property. Awesome. That was really easy. So now in order to do the next step, let's go to the flowchart of the edit property page here. And you can see after fetching the property, we might enter the error path. So we have two types of error. The first one is when the property is not existed with the specified ID. And then the next one is that property does not belong to the current user. So now let's implement the left path and deal with the scenario that the property is not existed. So get back to the VS code and I go to the edit property page here and here as you can see we checked if the property is available then we are going to render the add property form and pass the property to it so if the property is not available here which means that it is undefined we need to redirect the user to a 404 page so here let's change the condition the if statement and we're going to say if not property which means that it is undefined we just return and call the not found function that comes from the next slash navigation okay so in this way we're going to redirect the user to the 404 page if the property is not found so let's get back to the browser and here let's go ahead and enter a random id for the property for example 2000 i hit enter here and you can see now we are headed to a 404 page okay so as you can see things are really easy with next.js okay now let's get back to our flowchart the next error is that the user tries to edit a property that does not belong to him okay so let's get back to the vs code and here first we need to get the current user and since this is a server component we need to use the get kind server session to be able to access to the current user so as you might remember we are using the kind of for the authentication system in this tutorial okay so here i'm going to call the get kind server session okay let's call that and then from the returning object we are going to grab the get user function okay now we can call the get user function to access to the current user so here i'm going to say const user and then set it to returning object of the get user function it's a async function so need to use the await here and then let's call it get user okay so in this way we can access to the current user now we can check if the property belongs to user itself okay so after the first if condition here we're going to add another if 
First, we're going to check the user. Actually, we are going to check if the user is not available, which means that the user is not authenticated in the first place. Then we are going to put a or here. And then we're going to check if property that user ID does not equal to current user dot ID. Okay, so I forget to put a exclamation mark here. Okay, so now we are checking that if the user is not available, which means that the user is not authenticated, or if the user is authenticated but tries to actually update another user's property, we are going to redirect the user to a page with a unauthorized message. So here, since we are in a server component, we can use the redirect function, which comes from the next slash navigation, and then we can specify the route path of the unauthorized page. So here, we're going to pass a slash unauthorized. We're not created this page yet, but now we are going to create it. Okay, so let's save this and inside the app directory, in the root path of the app directory actually, we are going to create a folder called unauthorized authorized. Then inside it, we are going to create the page.tsx. Here we are going to create a functional component. Okay, let's name the page unauthorized page. The name actually is up to you. Doesn't really matter here. Okay, and inside the main div, we're gonna render a p tag. And inside it, we can say you are not authorized to do this action. Okay, now here we have an error and that's because we need to export the name of the page here. And let's put some Tailwind CSS classes here. Class name, we're gonna put the edge screen because we are going to span this if through the whole height of the screen. So we use the edge screen, and then flex, flex school, item center, and also justify center. Inside the p tag, I'm gonna set the class name. We're gonna use the capitalize because we are going to capitalize each word in this p tag with this class name. And then after that, we are going to render a no entry symbol. Okay, we're gonna use no symbol icon from the hero icons. Okay, and then put a class name, set its width W36, and for its color, add text red 500. Let's save this and now let's get back to the browser. Again, we have this error from importing the get current server session. Get back to the edit page and I mean edit property page here. And here, when we're gonna try to import the get current server session, we're gonna render it from the kind OSS kind of Next.js and then just slash server. Okay, so let's save this and now you can see the error is gone. So now here, let's edit the property with the ID of one, which is not belonging to this current user, okay? So if I hit enter here, you can see we are headed to a unauthorized page with this message. So let's put it on the center of the screen. Let's get back to the VS code and go to the unauthorized page. And here, instead of item center, we have set item start. So let's fix that. Let's change it to item center and let's get back to the browser and you can see now the error in the center of the screen. So yeah, that's it for this section. We have implemented the authentication and authorization for the edit property page. And in the next section, we are going to implement the delete property feature for our application. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. I will really appreciate your support and please hit the bell button to get informed about the next video, which is going to be uploaded very soon. So have a nice time. Stay tuned for my next video. Bye-bye.